Hey, Hawkeye hey. fans. Chad Lysico, the Des Moines Register, Dargan Southern of the Des Moines Register. Uh, the Hawkeyes are headed back to the national championship game. What a game, Dargan. Uh, we did not get to sit next to each other, so we really haven't talked much about this game, but the Hawkeyes beat UConn 71 to 69. Rally from a 12 point deficit, man. Um, it felt like the Big Ten title game to me. I know the ending wasn't the same, but just the awful first half and then coming out in the second half as a totally different team. And that's got them back in. That got them back into the game. And I don't know. How'd, how'd you see they do it? How'd you see them do it? Yeah. I mean, once again, it, it really feels like everything that Iowa has experienced this season, gone through this season, gone through in the past few years, it's all being put on the table at this time of the year and this time in Caitlin Clark's career, which only has 40 minutes left in it at Iowa. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't a clean effort. It wasn't, you know, a good offensive effort. Iowa, you know, wasn't really able to establish the rhythm that they like to get in early. Um, and it was a grind. I mean, the turnovers early were just incredible. I mean, it was like they couldn't even hold on to the ball. I mean, it was like they, you know, there was a, a – there was a large chance for UConn to really take control of the game. Mm -hmm. when they were up 10 and they were up 12 and, you know, could have pushed it out to 15 or 16. And maybe that's a more demoralizing situation, but they did not And Iowa came back and, and they grabbed control in the fourth quarter as they do, you know, so often, and then really just hang hung on at the end for dear life. Um, obviously the, the offense or the moving screen heard round the world, if you want to call it that, uh, at the end. But look, looked like the right call. I think everybody is in in agreement on that. But well, I don't know um, about everybody. But. Well, yeah, maybe if you're wearing blue and, <laughs> and have a dog, a husky on your front. But I, I, I mean, I don't think it was. I think it was the moment that was more mm. controversial than the actual call, which was, you know, probably the right call. But anyway, um, and now here we are again. You know, Iowa, 40 minutes from a national title, exactly where they ex said they wanted to be, exactly where they said they expected to be. Um, and obviously there's another giant on the other side there Sunday afternoon. But um, getting through this game and not having it be, you know, such a huge thing that required, you know, 40 draining minutes um, like last year's Final Four win did, I think puts Iowa in a better position mentally to handle what's going to be another chaotic 36 hours as they try to somehow flush this and uh, turn their attention to South Carolina. Yeah. We, I think we're back here for media in like eight hours, something like that. So that's going to be fun. Uh, that's for South Carolina. Iowa does get a little more time, but let's talk about that screen. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, you know, here's the quote from, from Gabby Marshall. Uh, she said, uh, I figured they were going to set a couple screens I was staying on her hip the whole game. She's talking about Paige Beckers. And if I'm on her hip, the person can't move into you and they have to give you room to go around it. So I hit it and I knew it was a moving screen. I'm happy it was called. It was just a huge moment. So, uh, you, you mean, you look at the play. Gabby does a great job selling it. I think that was – and it was right in front of the ref. I mean, the ref is standing right there. Uh, Aaliyah Edwards does move. She sticks her elbow out a little bit. Uh, you know, Paige Becker's just, uh, you know, probably didn't come off the screen like she should have. And Gabby did a good job. I mean, Gabby was all over Paige all day. I know everybody was roasting me the second I posted that Gabby drew that assignment. Like UConn fans, I mean, like, oh, she's never going to be able to keep up with her. She played great defense, and so did so did the Hawkeye team. I mean, Paige Becker's only scores 17 points on 7-17 seven of 17 shooting. And really didn't do much damage on the stat line outside of that. No, no steals, three assists, four four rebounds. It, it was not a stat filling sheet for Paige Beckers, on what was not a great night for Caitlin Clark by her standards. Uh, a season tying a season low with twenty one, and um, you know, but uh, you know, she still outplayed him because Gabby outplayed her because Gabby played really good defense on page and, and the whole team played good defense too, which is what I wrote about. So I hope you'll read it. Well, and I think that speaks to the maturity of this group that, you know, maybe a, a two years ago, if they struggle that bad offensively, they don't get the defensive performance to, 
Uh, no, no way. Massive. Gabby Marshall said that. She said we weren't very good my sophomore year on defense at all. And you covered those teams. Yeah, you know that. And, and, and we so, saw it happen against West Virginia. They they get they won that game with defense. Yeah, and so that's now two games in this tournament where Iowa has won scoring, I guess, under seventy five points, which doesn't seem to happen very often. And so um, again, that first half could have been detrimental to. Um, you know, a, a younger team and a younger Caitlin Clark, too, because um, they really I mean, UConn played Caitlin Clark defensively as probably as well as anybody I've seen play defense against her the last two years. I mean, they picked her up full court. They wouldn't let her get the ball. They basically did everything that every coach says they want. That's how you do to handle Caitlin, except they were one of the few that actually put it on the court and it materialized. And you know, she scored the first bucket of the game and then didn't score again until I think five minutes ago in the second quarter, um, somewhere in there. So uh, for her to, again, show the mental capacity to put that behind her, um, it was another game where she really didn't have any, you know, issues with the refs or, or any sort of outbursts or anything like that. And I think it was just, you know, a culmination of everything that's been in play for this team all year long. Um, coming down to the the biggest moments of the season. And this is a team that even with UConn on the other side and everything that UConn owns, this is a team that is confident in being in this moment and handling this moment and accepting this moment for what it is and and not running from it. Um, And you saw that again. And, you know, it is fitting that Gabby Marshall's defense plays such a big role because, you know, when she was struggling shooting earlier in the season, I feel like there was a lot of people that maybe lost some appreciation for that. You know, hey, she's an offensive liability. So is it really that is it really worth it to have her defense uh, be in there when her offense is struggling? And you saw again tonight, um, you know, the defense won her won the game. And that was exactly what Iowa needed uh, down the stretch in another tense moment. You got some activity behind you there. He, yeah. he was moving from my spot over to yours. So uh, that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. And Gabby also had uh, five rebounds, which she's not normally a big rebounder. And she did have a big, long two pointer uh, in that fourth quarter as well. Five points, five boards for Gabby. Uh, I hope you wrote something about Hannah Stolke because I barely got her mentioned in my story because I, I focused on the rebound by a Fulcher the defense by Gabby and kind of just staying in the game in that first half when it could have gotten away from them. So let's talk about Hannah Stolke leads the team with 23 points. I mean, she played, I mean, she played great and she, without her, Iowa has zero chance of winning this game. She plays 38 minutes, Dargan, uh, five of seven from the line. Also nine of 12 from the field and really challenged Aaliyah Edwards because the fouls were mounting for UConn and they kind of had to let her go a few times, but she was aggressive and took those points. Yeah, I did. I did get to Stolke because um, as you said, there was so much going on that sometimes, um, you know, I think really what her biggest contribution tonight was keeping Iowa float in the first half and in the moments before they came back and took control of the game because Um, You know, Iowa's offense was not flowing well. It was not uh, crisp. It was not consistent. Um, And Hannah down low was really all they could muster for a good extended stretch. So for those points to come in a crucial time when Iowa needed something on offense to stay within reach, um, you got that from Hannah Stolke, who, you know, maybe hasn't had the best tournament up to this point, but when the stage got this big and the lights got this bright. And obviously her confidence has been a talking point the whole season, um, really her whole career so far Um, for her to bounce back and deliver in a moment like that, I think really shows her maturity, her growth. Um, And you got to remember, you know, this is in theory going to be her team next year. And so all these moments are big for her long-term as well. Um, But Iowa needed, needed that stability. They needed that, production because uh you know without it UConn's lead probably gets a little wider and then it's just kind of a mental game of you know hey can we come back or or anything like that so um and and it is funny you know Hannah up on the on the podium is always a good laugh 
uh, Caitlin's answers go about this long on the transcript and Hannah's go about this long on the transcript, but she's, she's doing well. She's, I mean, all this media stuff is probably a little out of her comfort zone and it has been absurd here. There's no denying that. Um, but it was another big game for her. And now, I mean, talk about the ultimate challenge. Yeah. I mean, Cardoso to, to end this season, um, really kind of puts everything in perspective. Uh, of where she is and and where she's you know trending toward. Yeah, no doubt about it. What uh, what a game! I mean, I, I'm really I can't wait to rewatch this game because it was such a blur. Honestly, um, it happens a lot like that. Yeah, I mean, you know this this was not the comfortable uh, write it in the third quarter type of game. I mean, I had no idea what I was going to write, and it was <laughs> what I published at the buzzer was kind of garbage. It's a lot better now, I promise. It's, I'm <laughs> same, not gonna say I'm not going to say it's great, but it's a lot better, and it actually has a theme and stuff like that. But let's talk about the comeback, too, because uh, Bluter said this as well. Like, it was the defense that kind of brought them back. Uh, you know, the offense finally got, gets going. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, you know, it was, it was 28-16, to 16, Dargan. And, uh, you know, like we said, they got it to six by half, but it still didn't feel like they were over the hump. And then Gabby hits a three right right out of the gate to start the second half. And all of a sudden after 12 turnovers in the first half and 26 points, they scored 25 points in the third quarter with no turnovers. So it was, it was a complete 180. Kate Martin said there was a lot of calm. They just said, let's go out and win it. They were not panicked whatsoever. And I feel like that's another sign of maturity for this team. Yeah. And I feel like the no panic in that situation may have been, even bigger than the no panic down the stretch because I, you know, Caitlin said after the game, everybody was in there not saying, Oh, we need to make shots. It's, Oh, we need to stop turning the ball over and we'll be good. And so I think Iowa's ability to not just get to these moments, but be calm in these moments is huge because, you know, last year as exciting as it was, it did seem like Iowa was a little bit of a fish out of water when it got to, these big stages you know i know they pulled a big upset um against south carolina but it still felt like particularly in the title game that iowa was still kind of trying to to get comfortable with all of this on the fly and this year is is totally different and i think that's been the biggest sign of going through last year and how everything along this journey has been kind of a an incremental stepping stone to getting to this point where you're you're back in the title game you have a chance to actually do it. And, you know, the I was going to need a good game on Sunday, obviously, but I think the confidence is there to, to deliver it. And so, you know, when you have moments like a terrible first half, when you have moments like a frustrating, you know, string of turnovers, you know, those are inevitable in, in games like this. Even games on this big a magnitude, of this big magnitude with these good of teams, that adversity is going to come in game in some form. And Iowa has seen all kinds of adversity this year and, you know, is, is not going to panic when that happens, even if it happens by them not, you know, displaying what this program has been built on, which is transition offense, quick offense, getting a lot of, of action. So, you know, I, I think I think Iowa wasn't surprised that they made the comeback and, and got back in the game, but I think – not every I think it needs to be said that not every team could handle that moment and respond the way that the Hawkeyes did under that kind of pressure. Yeah, and as I just touted my improved column, I noticed like a stray quote just in the middle of something in there. So I deleted it. It's out of there. It's better now. Uh, here, the quote I was looking for was from Caitlin Clark. Uh, it was the it was what I used to finish the column. She said, uh, kind of of the supporting cast that um, you know all the different contribution it wasn't just caitlin like bringing the team back she said i think that's one of the greatest ways our program has evolved over the course of me being here i used to feel like i had to do everything now i have so much trust in my teammates and my teammates have so much trust in me and i just knew they were going to make plays down the stretch i thought that was a really good quote dargan um uh, you know she, she's always good for a good quote but uh it led me to the to the kate martin thing she was clutch. Talk about two monstrous buckets in the final three minutes that kind of extended Iowa's lead. And they were tough shots. I mean, there was a, there was some driving, spinning 
uh, nature to, to what Kate Martin did in the fourth quarter. Uh, she scores with 6.25 to go. Then she scores with 2.57 to go. Then again with 2.14 to go. That gives Iowa a 70-64 to 64 lead. And remarkably, Dargan, they only score one more point after that. So they almost threw this thing away. Uh, would have been the, uh, the ultimate collapse almost. I mean, to, to throw away a, a, a six-point lead essentially in the final stages without really even getting to the free throw line. So um, have to rewatch that again, too, to kind of understand what happened there. But uh, again, you get the stop. I mean, I know it's a moving screen or whatever, but that was a stop. Iowa got the stop. You kind of had the ball with a chance to win with nine seconds left and Iowa got the ball back. Yeah. And, and circling back to Kate Martin, um, it only seemed fitting that she suffers another nose injury and has to uh, absorb a blow to the face, which seemed incidental, but she takes off sprinting to the locker room. And I think everybody knew she was coming back, but how long it would take her to come back was a different story. And so, you know, she sprinted off and, and sprinted back on uh, shortly after. And that kind of, you know, sums up Kate Martin in a nutshell there, just kind of gutting through it, grinding through it to, to do whatever they needed. And, Again, you know, as much as Caitlin steals the show and steals the headlines, I think it's important to know to note that her getting to the point where she can think like that, where she knows that her teammates need to be involved, and that's the only way they're going to get to, um, you know, goals like they have now, uh, I think that's a huge sign of her maturity and her growth because, you know, if you look at, and if you look at where Caitlin Clark was last year after the title game, you're sitting there thinking, okay, how can she get any better? And, and not only has she managed to get better in terms of stats and on the court, but it's the mental side of things that has improved so much. And it's really opened the door for everything that's happened the last two years, because without that trust, without that belief, you, you see Caitlin running around, jacking up tough shots, trying to force things. And that would have been easy to do, especially when they were losing. And so again, it's, we've said it a ton. We we've talked about it a lot, but it really just seems like everything that this team has experienced and been through is all coming together and culminating on what is a massive stage. And so, um, you know, regardless of what happens Sunday, I think this has been a tremendous display of, you know, the cohesion that Iowa has preached so, for so long, materializing on the court in a massive way um, and very well could end up with a, uh, a net cutting celebration here when it's all said and done. Yeah, let's uh, we got to get out of here. It's two thirty in the morning and uh, we got to drive to the hotel yet. So. By the way, there's a uh, there's one hundred and eighty people on here at one thirty in the morning. Uh, you guys are the best. You, so you shout out. Fans. Shout out to everyone tuning in because I'm barely awake. And I'm sure you guys are. Well, I don't know. It, it's it's. Pretty I think you guys are pretty wired. You guys. Yeah, are wired. I, I will say it's kind of hard to wind down from these games <laughs> like this. So, uh, but shout out to everyone on here. That's uh, that's really awesome. Yeah, I, I snuck this in my story too, and I did tweet it. So it's probably not like a news flash to everybody. But uh, Sydney Folter gets a text from McKenna Warnock right after the game. Uh, I thought that was a cool moment because McKenna, of course, uh, down on this end of the court, you know. I was up two against South Carolina in the national semifinals. Caitlin throws up kind of a wild three. It banks off the glass, kind of twirls in and out of the rim. But against South Carolina, which doesn't give up rebounds, McKenna Warnock gets that offensive rebound, and that basically helped Iowa salt away that game with some Caitlin free throws. So in this situation, three seconds to go, Caitlin misses the second free throw. And if UConn gets that rebound, Dargan, they call timeout, and they, they yep. get to advance the ball. Uh, right. so they, I mean, they at least again, got a shot. A, yeah, once again, they have a, a shot to tie or win. But Sydney Fulter, uh, you know, th there she is again. She keeps just showing up in gritty ways. Gets her sixth offensive rebound of the game. Uh, had seven total boards, six of them offensive. I think that's a pretty amazing stat. And Iowa ends up winning the battle on the boards, 37-29. to 29. So she got a text from McKenna basically saying like, you know, Hey, we're same Z's, you know, like, I don't know if that's something like that. I can't remember, but we'll, it was we'll like, pretend she said same Z's. Yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> so, uh, I don't, kind of a cool moment, I guess, just that, you know, that 
she was thinking of that right when Sid got that board, and it was huge. Like like I said, supporting cast all the way through. Martin with 11 points, Fulcher with big boards, Marshall with a defense, Stolke with a monster game, and then Caitlin has 21 points, nine boards, seven assists. I kind of envision it like like a Jenga tower, you know, that's that's kind of precariously structured, and like if you remove one of the pieces out, the whole thing collapses. I, I feel like that's where we're at with this Iowa team, that every piece has to be in the right place, doing the right thing, knowing its role. Um, and when they all come together, you see the Jenga tower stands up and doesn't wilt and doesn't collapse and all that. So, um, again, you, you need that kind of belief and you need that kind of cohesion to do things like win a national title. And it can't be something that just shows up in the tournament. This has to be something that, you know, is preached relentlessly all the way through practice, all the way through the season um, and in a situation where is famous and as big as Caitlin Clark's fame has gotten, that's not a given, you know, that everybody can get to the point where they feel like they have a role and perform to the level that you need to, to be successful on stages like this. So, you know, I think obviously Lisa Bluter and her staff have gained a lot of, of kudos through this run. Um, And I think, again, you're, you're seeing it play out every game, every quarter, really that, that there's some, meshing together of this team that makes a huge impact in the end. All right. I said title game thought, then I just started talking about a full turn rebounding. So here's my thought. Here's my thought. Hawkeyes went seven of 25 from three today. That's 28%. That is uncharacteristically low for the Hawkeyes. Caitlin did not have a great shooting game. Uh, She ends up seven for 18, uh, three for 11 from three. But to her credit, I feel like she dialed in what she needed to, uh, you know, to get points down the stretch. She had 15 in the second half. So that was, that was pivotal. But what my point was going to be, if they're going to win this, just be, just be hot from three and you can win a national championship. And they've done that time and time again this year, they can hit. I mean, Caitlin can go off and hit eight, nine threes on Sunday, you know, uh, you know, a Fulter, Martin Marshall. I mean, Marshall was, I think two for nine today. I mean, turn that into, four for eight and you could beat South Carolina that we've seen this, that they're not invincible. Um, they can turn it on and blow you out, but Iowa can win this. And that's, you got your, you got a chance on Sunday. Yeah. You get within 40 minutes of a title. Um, there's no reason to have any shortage of confidence that you can get it done. Even with somebody as daunting as South Carolina on the other side. Um, and I think, I think really the key is, You know, as much as Caitlin has risen to the level that she is and everybody's kind of now tuned in, can she win a title? Can she do that? The pressure on Sunday is undoubtedly going to be on South Carolina. I mean, they. Yeah, I agree. In my my opinion, it's very obvious because. Especially after last year. Yeah, this is trying to complete an undefeated season after blowing an undefeated season last year against the same team in with the same nucleus of people. And so if Iowa can get it to the point where the tension kicks in for South Carolina, that's exactly what they did last year. They got a South Carolina team that was uncomfortable and didn't have a lot of experience last year Mm -hmm. with, you know, light or late tight tension. And so if they can get it to a point, that's a, that's a tongue twister. (laughs) Um, If they can get it to a point where, where South Carolina really feels that pressure again, then I think Iowa could have something because, you know, it's 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 pr- you think about all the the second chances that Iowa has gotten during this during Caitlin's career, um, you know, a, a second chance to go on a deep run with the five last year, a second chance at LSU, a second chance at getting to the final four and now a second chance at a national title game, which for Iowa to get one chance at a national yeah. title seemed s- absurd enough not too long ago. But now they're going to get another one, and it feels like that, again, all everything that has happened that has been stored up and stored away mentally, physically, all that, it's all going to be on the line Sunday. Um, and, and I think there's reason to feel like Iowa is in a more confident spot going in, uh, even than they were last year. And Caitlin Clark did not win the Don Staley Award today. I mean, I'm just saying she did. 
Don yep. Staley had a quote about how Hannah Hidalgo plays better defense, basically. So, <laughs> hey, I'm actually happy because it means I didn't have to write a story on her winning the <laughs> awards. So, um, that that's kind of. I told you at. I would alert you guys if Caitlin Clark did not win an award. So that's yeah. me alerting you that she did not. There win you go. I'm just saying she, she can put that little chip on her shoulder. Uh, Connor can tell her, and uh, <laughs> and she. <laughs> Just pocket that away and then go off for 41 to, on Sunday. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to get her motivated. No, no. <laughs> All right, we got to go. For Chad yes. Lysico, for Dark and Southern, I'm Chad Lysico, and we will be back here in like seven hours. Something uh, like that. Something like that. I don't know what we'll time get, it is. What time we booked our flights home. home. We booked our flights home. We're coming home Monday. Uh, come hell or high water, we're leaving here. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, talk to you soon.